beautiful. Yes, you. Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Farida, also known as Curly Proverbs. And if you didn't know, around here is no kinks, no coils, and no curls left behind. And we particularly love Ayurveda and all things natural for taking care of our beauty needs. Please excuse the madness if you can hear my children in the background, working mother, trying to keep it all together and spin loads of plates. So today we're actually going to be talking about my top 10 Ayurvedic herbs. Now Ayurveda, when I, when I went to actually start researching this video, I came across like a rabbit hole of information. It was ridiculous. I mean, I've always known that Ayurveda works. I mean, the evidence speaks for itself. My audience long term have been vouching for the fact that Ayurveda works. Like we know it does, right? Well, I've actually uncovered journals and scientific research that proves what we have been saying all along. Like literally, I found studies that showed mice that were bald being given Ayurvedic herbs that caused their hair to grow back not only denser, thicker hair strands, it actually decreased the amount of visible scalp. There was so much hair growing back. And then they showed the same to happen in women. And there's so, so many studies to show that these herbs really work. They're potent and they have the most amazing properties. So if that sounds interesting, then keep watching. Guys, I am so excited to announce that I have collaborated with Bell Bar Organic to bring you our first ever natural Ayurvedic hair growth course. It actually features tips from myself, demos, an Ayurvedic hair care education system looking at the best practices to grow hair, breakdown of products, DIY recipes, high porosity tip, low porosity tips, downloadable PDFs, checklists, charts, and Bell Bar Organic have included their own foundational porosity educational series to help you understand your hair before our coming hair growth challenge. That's going to be starting on the 18th of January. So make sure um, you check out the links that I'm going to have in the description box. If you're interested in buying the bundle that goes along with the hair growth challenge, then it's literally half price at the moment. And and it contains the green tea, the argan oil butter, the hibiscus restorative mask, the henna, the thickening onion and garlic oil, and the hibiscus black soap. So be sure to check it out. There's also a private Facebook group that you can join as part of the challenge. Super exciting stuff. Let me know if you're hyped about it and let's get back to the video. So the very first one I'm going to be talking to you about is Amla. This is the one that had the study in 2012 which showed regeneration of dormant follicles, re-thickening of the hair, increase of density. Amla is like super high in vitamin C. In fact, it has double the amount of vitamin C as a KI fruit. And it has 17 times the amount of antioxidants than pomegranates. So it really is like super potent stuff. Amla actually grows in warmer climates. So it grows all over Asia, particularly in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, China, China. It also grows in several um, Arab countries in the Middle East, and it's traditionally actually used in Indian, Chinese, and Arab medicine, including common cold and fever. Uh, it's particularly good at this because it has high levels of vitamin C. It is also a liver tonic and a hair tonic traditionally. It's anti-inflammatory and, in fact, has been shown to have anti-cancer properties because it's a chemo preventative, and it also is a free radical radical scavenger. That means that it protects your cells and your DNA from harmful environmental factors. Self really nicely to being used in hair masks. You can actually heat it up in oil to infuse the oil with its properties. You can use it in a spray or a rinse that you can make up just by adding hot water to the herbs and allowing it to steep. And in my experience of using it, it really has strengthened my hair so, so much. So if you're experiencing breakage, it really is the one for you. If you have um, inflammation of the scalp, it really is amazing for soothing that. And the other thing that it does, which is amazing, is it's anti-collating, which means it binds onto excessive um, heavy metals in the body and draws them out. So if you've got a buildup of something like mercury or iron, it actually binds onto it and removes it 
What ingredient from a regular shampoo or conditioner does that? I'll tell you what, Amla. And it's not included in most um, shampoos that you can buy in the potency that you actually need it in. Like literally something that will bind onto metals that are making your body ill, that are affecting your immune system and draw it out. Plus thicken your hair. I mean, it's game set really, yeah. Okay, the other herb that I want to mention is shikaikai. I've actually been using this for six years. What I love about this is that it um, really does condition the hair, but it can actually be used in conjunction with other herbs such as aretha and have a cleansing effect as well. As with all of these herbs, you can use it in a tea, you can use it in a rinse, you can use it infused into oil and the strength that you get from this is absolutely undeniable. And the pots of the plant are rich in saponins, which are foam forming substances. It's actually able to grab onto grease and pull it out. So it's great to be used as a cleansing conditioning treatment that nourishes the scalp. It's rich in vitamins and antioxidants, which make your hair super, super shiny. And it has a natural slight lather, which obviously it has cleansing properties. It's great for soothing the scalp, fighting dandruff. It nourishes the follicles and cleanses the hair. It has a naturally low pH, so it won't strip your hair of natural oils like a clarifying shampoo, and also can be combined really, really well with Aretha. Okay, I have one word for you. It is fenugreek. Guys, my audience around here are mad for fenugreek. You guys have had ridiculous, ridiculous results. I don't wanna show bias, but it's definitely one of my favorites. It contains amino acids, it contains iron, it contains manganese, it contains magnesium. All these things are really critical for hair growth. In fact, people who have been um, said to have unexplained breakage of their hair or thinning of the hair are often deficient in one of these um, minerals. So the fact that fenugreek has it in such um, high concentration relative to the size of the seed is amazing. It's also been shown to cause regeneration in dormant hair follicles. It is cultivated in India, Argentina, Egypt and the Mediterranean countries including uh, the south of France, Morocco and Lebanon. In India it's grown extensively in Rajasthan and um, the Punjab and is used in flavoring foods. You can actually grow the shoots and put them into your salads. You can put them into breads, etc. It can be cooked with vegetables. And in fact, it is used often as a tea by breastfeeding mums and is actually shown to like double the amount of milk production a lot of women are able to express, therefore helping them to increase the weight of their newborn baby. So it has lots of uses traditionally and one teaspoon of fenugreek seeds actually contains 20% of your recommended daily allowance of iron, which is phenomenal and especially helpful for women who are suffering from anemia or dietary related hair loss and stress related hair loss. It is really, really helpful. And it has been a really important part of my hair growth oils, which you guys have had amazing results with, and my teas and my rinses. I've used it consistently and there is nothing like it to strengthen your hair. I also find that when I use it, it gives my hair like a slightly brownish hue. I really like that it gives a little bit more like depth to my hair, um, my hair color as well. So I really do like it overall. That is my son in the background. It's all good. Um, but I will say one thing though, the smell is quite spicy. So you might just have to go in heavy with the essential oils. All right. So, you know, I'm not about to do a video on Ayurveda and not mention Bay Henna, you know, my ride or die forever. So henna grows and is naturalized widely in Egypt, in India, in Iran, in Central Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa and across the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. I know when I was growing up in Sierra Leone that we had henna growing in abundance, literally a few doors down, we had um, henna crop growing there. And it's traditionally used as a natural hair dye and strengthener. It's also 
used in beautification, in body art, in dyeing the nails and fingers, in traditional art, and in beautiful, intricate tattoos as well. Um, and it's been used medicinally and cosmetically for over 9,000 years. Now, the really, really important um, ingredient in this is actually the Lawson dye, but it also contains a wide range of uh, compounds, including fatty acids, including amino acids that are really strengthening to the hair. But the Lawson dye actually binds onto the keratin in the hair shaft, causing it to thicken. And the great thing about henna is it's one of the treatments, one of the very few treatments that actually builds on the hair over time. So if you use it now and then you use it again in two weeks time, the benefits from the previous use are still bound to the hair shaft and then the Lawson and all the goodness binds another layer on top. Thus it's actually known to thicken hair. The time it takes for the Lawson dye to be released from henna, which typically is at least four hours, it's recommended that if you are going to be using henna and mixing up a paste, that you do so four hours before application to the hair and then leave it on for about an hour at the very least, although you could go up to six hours if you wish. That said, some women have found that it elongates their curl, so that's something that you might want to bear in mind. Henna actually is able to reconstruct any broken um, cuticles that have separated from the hair shaft. It really does rebuild. It helps to balance out the porosity of hair. So if you have high porosity hair, it is one of those things which is able to actually rebuild where there's areas of damage to actually balance out your hair's porosity. I love the strength that it imparts. It's great used in a gloss. And um, in fact, I do prefer just to use a teaspoon of it in my main conditioner as opposed to a mask in the winter time. And I know that Bell Bar Organic have actually um, got a henna mask, which we collaborated on right at the beginning of their journey and my journey actually. And it's balanced with marshmallow root. It's got apple cider vinegar. It's got all different herbs that balance out the strength of the henna and allow you to still have that slip. I absolutely adore it and um, it is definitely here to stay. In fact, it's actually also a part of the bundle that we um, mentioned in the previous video. Okay, so let's talk aloe vera. So aloe vera is a succulent plant that grows really um, in most tropical or semi-tropical and arid climates. Uh, it originates from the Arab Peninsula, but it grows in warm climates all over the world. It is cultivated for agricultural and medicinal uses and beauty uses as well. It can be turned into a powder form and used in a tea, or it can be turned into um, a liquid and used as a juice or it can be kept in its more jelly-like substance. There are lots of gel applications for the skin and hair. It has really very, very potent uh, properties. It's well known to help the healing of burns and bruises. It helps accelerate that. It's very potent as an antioxidant and antimicrobial. It helps to treat canker sores. It improves skin. I know my mum puts that on her skin every single night and her skin is flawless. People never believe her age. I particularly love to use it in teas. So I'll add the powder to some hot water water or I can use it in my rinses. Also, it's a great addition to hair masks as well. It really does balance out and complement most Ayurvedic herbs. Aloe vera, guys, if you are mixing up any conditioner, okay, just add a teaspoon or two of aloe vera and your hair shine, strength, the ease of detangling will be transformed. Now, all most of these Ayurvedic herbs that I'm mentioning are like crazy strengthening um, and aloe vera is strengthening but it adds like slip and shine and it really helps you to be able to use the other herbs in a mask alongside it and not have difficulty with the malleability or the um the what's the word i'm looking for 
the flexibility of your hair. That's the word I was looking for. So aloe vera is fantastic for the flexibility of the hair. It also contains en an enzyme that reinvigorates um, dormant hair follicles and balances scalp health and pH and the hair's pH as well. So definitely one that you want to have in your arsenal. You can have it as a powder or you can have it as a juice. It works really, really well either way. Okay, now we're gonna talk about Bryn Raj. Bryn Raj is one of those herbs, again, that I had in my arsenal from six, seven years ago. It is like the king, the king of Ayurvedic herbs. It really does increase and speed up hair growth. I mean, all of these herbs are potent but literally this one really is high up there it is actually one of those herbs that is really fantastic to use in a tea because it is great at decreasing hair fall so if you're looking for a herb to use in a tea brimraj would be really very very good if you added that to like a green tea for a rinse it would work fantastically brimraj actually grows best in moist and warm climates so it grows really really well in in Thailand, in India, and in Brazil. And again, it has medicinal uses as well as beauty uses and has been so for thousands of years. Um, often, Bryn Raj can be heated up in a carrier oil such as almond oil or coconut oil to release its benefits into the oil and then be used in applications. It can also be incorporated into hair masks and teas. Bryn Raj has been used as an effective neutralizer of snake venom venom even which is insane it has lots of uses for um, decreasing stress and increasing blood flow it promotes blood flow and strengthens blood vessels that is really critical when we're talking about increasing blood flow to the hair follicles and therefore increasing rates of hair growth a 2008 study actually showed that it was more effective than rogaine in increasing hair growth and preventing hair loss so hibiscus guys hibiscus is that beautiful red or sometimes pink flower it's got a fiery color it it grows in loads of hot climates i know when i lived in west africa it was growing like loads there i know it grows um in the west indies um and it has been used for the longest time the only downside of this is it actually can give your hair a slightly reddish tint but it's so powerful as an astringent and as a cleanser it actually lifts and removes oiliness from your scalp and from your hair um, it balances out the pH of your scalp and really does strengthen and reinforce follicles so if you're experiencing hair loss if you're experiencing hair fall again it's a really good one to incorporate to strengthen the hair follicles you've got remaining whilst you um, try and um, get regrowth in hair follicles that have gone dormant with things like amla um, in your arsenal people around the world use various parts of the plant as food and medicine and it's traditionally been used in um, different cultures as remedies for several different conditions egyptians drink loads of hibiscus tea it is said to lower body temperature and treat heart and nerve diseases and work as a diuretic it's also used for beauty treatment so for example in hair masks and pastes i particularly love using it in butters and oils particularly as a pre-shampoo treatment but also actually mixed into my conditioners as well it is said to stimulate hair growth even from dormant hair follicles in bald patches it's actually one of those herbs that can be mixed really relatively well with hair cleansers so it matches up well if you were going to mix it with Aretha or Shakai Kai, for example. I'm going to talk to you about neem now, guys. Like, my mother-in-law has been talking to me about neem for the longest time. If you didn't know, my husband is actually Indian. And she told me that when she was growing up, her mom literally used to get ghee and infuse it with neem and put it through their hair. In fact, some of my Indian subscribers have been hitting me up saying that I need to experiment with ghee in my hair. Now, I don't know if we're about to start a new trend in this natural scene but sounds out there we could give it a try in any case she used to have this neem put into her hair to ward off lice i didn't believe it did my research what do you know they did um an investigation 
12 children who had lice were treated with a shampoo that neem was infused into and guess what all 12 children were completely free of any lice by the end of the trial it's actually insane like what these herbs can do. Neem is actually great for scalp care. So specifically, if you have scalp issues, it's great for that. It's great for dandruff. If you have dandruff issues, you can actually make it up into a paste and apply it to your scalp. Um, I would recommend that if you were going to do that, that you mix it with fenugreek, maybe fenugreek powder. You mix up a paste, apply it to the scalp. It really will like help with any ailments with um, inflammation, whilst the fenugreek will really enforce and stimulate that hair growth um so neem really is more i would say is more to the medicinal side in my opinion and in my experience than it is for hair growth in in my experience so it's antifungal and anti um pest and all that good stuff so um if you are having issues along those lines then definitely check it out for that Neem actually features in ancient Sanskrit texts and has been used for loads of things such as oils and masks for millennia. It actually grows prolifically around South Asia, particularly in India and Sri Lanka, as well as Burma. It has medicinal properties and they've been known for thousands of years. Ashwagandha. Now this one I'm relatively new to. I have been using ashwagandha probably for like about six months now. And ashwagandha is one of those herbs that you want to use in your routine if you are experiencing hair loss due to hormones. So if like you're postpartum, postmenopausal, or if you are just experiencing um, an increase in your um, hair thinning, particularly at the front, front of your head, if your hair is receding, um, you're probably having Having signals that you have got some kind of a hormonal reason for your hair loss ashwagandha works really really great for that again I would recommend mixing up a paste maybe with some fenugreek powder or fenugreek seeds making up a paste and applying it to the scalp really massaging it in um, and it will help literally with the enzymes and the sequences that are happening in your hair follicles to cause hair regeneration and to prevent further hair loss so ashwagandha is definitely one to have in your routine and um, i think just on the whole just to maintain your thickness of your hair definitely ashwagandha ashwagandha is a short woody plant that is native to india africa and the mediterranean it is traditionally used as an anti-inflammatory anti-tumor anti-stress um, an immune boosting herb um, it works as an aphrodisiac and it's traditionally used in ayurveda it can be added to your shampoo. Uh, it's believed to improve scalp circulation, therefore strengthening your hair, and is well known for treating psoriasis and getting rid of dandruff and eczema. A bonus point with this is it actually also stimulates melanin production, which is the pigment responsible for your hair color. So in some cases, it's actually been shown to reverse graying. It can be used as a drink or taken orally as a supplement. It can be applied directly onto the scalp and hair. Um, and you can actually make it up into a paste or a tea rinse or a hair mask. The last one I want to mention is Aretha. So the others are known for their conditioning and strengthening properties and their antibacterial properties and antimicrobial properties. Aretha is actually known as a cleanser. It's also known as a soap nut. It is one of those herbs, which if you added water to it, you can actually start to see small bubbles forming. It's a great cleanser and wonderful if you wanted to mix it in with Russell clay to really give your hair a deep cleanse, particularly if you're staying away from shampoo shampoos, particularly if you don't want to use cleansing creams. Aretha is a wonderful way to cleanse your hair, but whilst your hair is in that vulnerable wet state, it is actually just impact, imparting strength. It is known as a soap nut tree. It grows in um, Asia and subtropical areas and tropical areas as well. It's traditionally used as a cleanser, both for the hair and the skin. And because it's rich in vitamins A, D, E and K, it is known to impart shine to the hair and make it smooth and also to even out um, hyperpigmentation and unevenness in skin tone. It is well known for its anti 
antimicrobial nature and it is great for helping with scalp infections and skin infections. Soap nut is also shown to be an insecticidal, which means it kills lice living on the scalp and helps with um, dandruff, taming frizz and helping with curl definition as well as conditioning the hair to make it more manageable. Now, I have talked for a minute about all of these herbs and I cannot stress to you enough, like I'm out here on YouTube telling you this stuff works. I really... I cannot emphasize it enough, like how much it can change your hair life, how much it can have your hair thriving and just benefit your health, decreasing your use of chemical and toxin laden um, shampoos and conditioners and trying to incorporate more and more herbs in your routine. You cannot have or find any protein treatment or conditioning treatment on the market that's going to be as potent as these herbs are. And of course, Bell Bar Organic have balanced these herbs with other ingredients that are going to not decrease their potency, but complement them and balance them so that it doesn't go to the other end of the spectrum of overstrengthening um, and therefore causing any digression or any setback. So if that sounds of interest, that's going to be linked below this video. If you found this video helpful, please do give me a thumbs up. It really does support my channel. I really am trying to pour into the community and really trying to build because around here it's no kinks, no coils and no curls left behind. Thumbs up if you're feeling it and I'll see you in the next video.